Apple sure didn't disappoint with the Mac Studio they knocked it out of the park. I was upgrading from a 2017-27 inch Intel quad-core iMac with 40GB of RAM, mainly used for video editing in DaVinci Resolve and photo editing in Adobe Lightroom, and the occasional bit of gaming, yes you heard that right, gaming on a Mac. This video is sponsored by DaVinci Resolve Titles.com, they make easy to use drag and drop title packs for DaVinci Resolve, and stick around to the end of the video and you can get a free title pack. There's quite a few options when ordering a Mac Studio. Should you buy an M1 Max or an M1 Ultra? How much RAM do you need to add? How much storage should you get? You can't upgrade the storage later on. Once it arrives, you're stuck with that amount. If you need to check how much RAM you're using, open Activity Monitor and then select the Memory tab. At the bottom, you'll see Memory Used. While using the iMac, I checked the RAM usage and it was easily getting close to 32GB running DaVinci Resolve, LibreOffice, Chrome and a few other apps. So I figured go for 64GB of RAM as this would allow plenty of headroom in the future. Let's look at pricing and specs. Jumping from an M1 Max to an M1 Ultra doubles the price from $19.99 to $3.999. But benchmarks revealed double the price did not equal double the performance. Video export times are rapid on both. So I thought save the money, go for an M1 Max, 24-core GPU, 64GB of RAM, 1TB of storage. Mine came to around $2,600 for this spec. I did have budget to get an M1 Ultra, but really it would be overkill for my use. This meant extra budget for a second screen, which we'll get to a bit later on. I ordered the studio display with a VES amount for maximum flexibility. The monitor arm is the InVision monitor arm bracket for 22 to 35 inch screens. This works great, clamps onto the desks, tilts and swivels, feels rock solid, and it only costs around $60. It has good cable management too. Apple stand, which adds 400 to the price, is only height and tilt adjustable, so the InVision is a much better option. The 27-inch 5K Retina display is stunning and incredibly sharp, ideal for photo editing and video editing work. What do I like the most after six months with the Mac Studio? The SD card reader on the front is super useful. I shoot photos and video with the Canon R6, pop the SD card into the Mac, import the files and you're good to go. The old high Mac I was constantly having to stick my head around the back, reach behind the screen, it was really frustrating. Now that's not even an issue. For content creators, having the SD card reader on the front makes inserting SD cards easy. The reader is so much faster than my old Mac. It helps speed up the workflow, you can get files imported quicker, so you can start editing sooner. If you do a lot of drone filming, then it's worth getting an SD to micro SD adapter too. The design works really well, you get the SD card reader on the front, two USB-C ports with the M1 Max, with the M1 Ultras, the front ports are both Thunderbolt 4, but that's fine with me. On the rear, you get four Thunderbolt 4 ports, 10 gigabit Ethernet, a power socket, two USB-As, handy for older devices, and a HDMI 2.0 port. You also get a 3mm high impedance headphone socket. It has all the ports I want, and it's really portable. I bought some USB-C to USB-A converters, and a USB-A to USB-C to give maximum flexibility on all the ports. I'll put the links in the description. They do come in pretty handy. If you have a USB-A, you can then plug it into the front of the Mac. Clients often hand me a USB-A device with files on it. This saves me reaching around the back of the Mac. On the Mac Studio display, you also have three more Thunderbolt 4 ports with 96 watts of power, so you can charge iPhones, charge MacBooks, and plug in additional hardware. Noise. It is very quiet. If you put your ear right up close, you can just about hear the fans. Recording voiceovers with a good microphone, you can't hear it at all in the background. When editing large projects, I don't even hear the fan. As you can see, I have a lot of devices plugged in, two monitors, a Blackmagic keyboard, and a Blackmagic mini colour panel. For video editing storage, I use the SanDisk Extreme 4TB NVMe SSD. The internal drive is very fast with speeds of around 5000 megabytes read and write. This machine is a video editing beast. Apple claim you can edit up to nine streams of 8K ProRes, which is believable. I can easily create a 4K timeline in DaVinci Resolve 18, add four streams of 4K video on the timeline with animated fusion titles, and the playback is smooth. No beach ball of doom. DaVinci Resolve feels fast and responsive, and colour grading is the same. Exporting a video for YouTube is rapid. I've seen a seven minute video export in about a minute and a half. Lightroom photos import extremely fast, previews are rapid, and again, exports are super quick. Final Cut Pro performance is similar, everything feels fast. For creators, this is an incredible piece of hardware. It leaves my old Intel iMac in the dust. With the extra budget saved by the M1 Max, I bought a 42-inch 4K HDR OLED Asus ROG Strix 120Hz gaming monitor. 
It's connected to the Mac via a Thunderbolt to DisplayPort cable. This allows it to run 4K HDR at 120Hz in DCI-P3 colour gamut. It's basically an LG C2 panel tweaked by a Zeus. OLED colours totally pop with a super fast 0.1 millisecond response time. I found the screen recordings from the larger panel look way softer as the pixels per inch is much lower, 105 ppi versus 218 ppi on the Mac Studio. So it's a clear win for the studio display if you do screen recording tutorials. I game on the 42 inch monitor. Metro Exodus makes use of Metal 3 graphics and the HDR looks stunning. Gameplay is smooth, no stutters and I have everything set on the highest settings. A few issues I have gaming. Controllers, there's only a few approved controllers. There's a link to the controllers in the description. I bought an Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. In the settings, Mac Game Controller see it, Metro Exodus can use it, older games like Call of Duty Black Ops 3 just won't work with it at all. I've been into Steam settings and nothing seems to solve it. Hopefully they'll fix this in future updates. Which Mac Studio should you go for? Video and photo editors, save you money, go for them on Mac 64 gig. If you're Disney Pixar, do 3D modelling, intensive visual effects, or have loads of extra cash, then go for the M1 Ultra. How many GPU cores should you get? From what I've seen in the benchmarks, adding more GPU cores doesn't really make a big difference right now. This may change as software gets more optimised. One terabyte of storage should be the bare minimum. Add external drives if you need more space. If I could go back in time, I'd order the two terabyte drive. Once you start installing lots of applications and games, they eat through the storage. Metro Exodus was around 86GB, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, 112GB. If your last computer was 1TB, double the storage and get 2TB. There are plenty of ports for extra storage. The 4TB Samsung SSD is worth it for video and photo editing. Let me know in the comments below which one you're thinking of buying. Overall, it's a fantastic machine for content creators. I'm planning to keep mine for 2-3 to three years, then upgrade to the newer model like an M3 Max or M4 Max. I'd also buy more stories next time too. This machine has reduced editing time, it speeds up day to day tasks, I do get more done in less time so it's totally worth buying a Mac Studio for me. I mentioned earlier you can get a free title pack, if you go to davinciresolvetitles.com you can claim your free title pack there. Well that's it for me guys, if you liked it hit that like button and smash that subscribe bell, if you didn't like it hit that dislike twice and thanks for watching.